Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we will be discussing about AWS Global Accelerators again and we'll do a short hands-on demo and I'll show you like how you can create your AWS Global Accelerator with EC2 instances this time. We'll be creating it with other components as well like the load balancers so if you want to watch them then please do subscribe and keep watching. So let's get started then. Okay, so this is my AWS console and uh, the first thing that we want to do is basically before creating any global accelerators, we need an endpoint. So we have to create our endpoints and that will be our EC2 instance. So you can go to EC2 here. Once you have clicked on this, you will be landing onto something like this. So this is the EC2 console and here you can just click on the running instances. There are no instances right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch the instance. And I'll choose the Amazon Linux AMI, so a Linux 2, that's the latest one. And I'll choose the 64 bit uh, x86 version, so I'll just click on select. And here I'll choose the t2.micro, which is free tier eligible. And before that, I just want to mention that uh, AWS Global Accelerator is not free. You have to spend uh, some around 5 to 10 rupees for this one. So if you don't want to do that, then you can just watch this video and learn otherwise if you want to try and you if you can spend some money then you can just go ahead and try that on your free tier account okay so the next thing that we have is configure instant details and here the number of instances is one then uh, the vpc is the current vpc that i'm using and not choose any uh, subnets and also auto send public ip is already enabled so everything that we have here is fine the only thing that i'm going to add is my user data or the boot script okay so i'll choose the boot script that i've already used before so this is the boot script or the user data script that i have where actually i'm installing nginx and i will be printing a short line this response is from the host name okay and let's suppose i am doing it for the instance that we have here like uh, mumbai then i can just name it have a great day and uh, just i'll put mumbai here a region colon mumbai okay because EC2 instances are regionally scoped, so we need to mention this here. I'll tell you like why am I actually mentioning this later on. But once you have this, I have already made a video on this one, how to install Nginx. You can watch that video or you can just follow what I'm doing it right now. So I'll just paste this script. So that's it. You don't have to change anything here. So once you have pasted this, then you can just go ahead and add storage. So this is fine for us. Then click on tags. So I can just add tag like name name is ec2 mumbai and then i can just configure security groups and the thing that i want to add is basically like uh, we want http so http is the type of protocol that i want to assign and at is the port range and uh, i want to allow it from everywhere so this is the basic security group that i want to add and it is telling us that your current security group does not have port 22. I'm not going to SSH on these uh, uh, instances. So it's not required for me to actually uh, add any port 22 enabling that in my security group. And if you want, you can do so. If you want to access the instance using SSH, you can basically go ahead and add, a rule, add another rule and just choose SSH from here and you can add that. But I will not be doing that. So I'll not add it. So once you have done this, you can just go ahead and click on review and launch and that's it. You can just review on whatever you have added before and uh, if you're fine with this and you're satisfied with this, then you can just go ahead and launch it. And it is telling me to choose a existing key pair. So as I'm not going to SSH onto these instances, uh, I don't necessarily need this, but I'll go ahead and choose it anyway. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and see the instance. So now it has been created and uh, the region that I am having right now is AP South 1 and the availability zone that is currently being used is AP South 1B. So this is one instance now we have created but I would want to create another instance as per the example that I had showed in the previous video for AWS Global Accelerators. So I'll change the region here. So which region should we choose? I'll go with the same one that I have shown in the previous section where I explained you in detail about how the AWS Global Accelerators are created. Okay, so North Virginia, US East one. So just go ahead and click on that. Okay, so see here. In North Virginia, we don't have any instance. 
Okay, so that's why I tell you that EC2 instances are regionally scoped. So you can go ahead and launch an instance. I'll follow the same procedure. And this is the Freeter eligible Amazon Linux 2 AMI. So I'll select this the same way that I did for Mumbai. And the t2.micro, I have already selected this. Then you can go to configure instance details. Everything is same for us. And just we need to paste our user data. Just copy this and I'll paste it. Okay, so the one thing that we need to change here is North, yeah, the North Virginia. So once this is done, you can just uh, add the storage and uh, add the tag. So this is fine. EC2 hyphen North Virginia. And then just you can go ahead and configure the security group and you can create a new one and you can just add HTTP so that we can access this through our browser. And then you can just go ahead and review and launch. So as there are no existing keypads, so I'll just proceed without a keypad because I don't want to search into these devices and just launch the instance. So my new instance has been created. I'll just wait for it to come up. So the instance is now running. So I can just copy this URL that I have public DNS and I can just paste it. So this is North Virginia and this is Mumbai. Okay. So now we have both of the instances already with us. So the next thing is obviously to create our AWS global accelerator. Yeah, so you can just find this by typing global. So this is the global accelerator. You can just right click on this one and click on open link in new tab. So once you are here, this is where the magic begins. Okay. So as you can see here, it's written that AWS global accelerator, AWS global accelerator is a service that improves the availability and performance of your applications with local or global users. It provides static IP addresses that act as a fixed entry point to your application endpoints in a single or multiple AWS region and uses the AWS global network to optimize the path from your users to your applications. So you have the user here, you have the global accelerator here and you have the endpoint. So the user traffic enters AWS global accelerator through the closest edge location and AWS global accelerators routes the user traffic to the closest healthy application endpoint over the AWS global network. And then the application response returns over the AWS global network and reaches the user through the optimal endpoint. Okay, so this is the one thing and you can just read about the benefits and features that you have and the use cases. And I've already mentioned these in the session before, but if you want, you can just go ahead and read them as well. That is what I would recommend. This is specific to a location. It's specific to Oregon. Okay, but AWS Global Accelerate is a global service that supports endpoints in a single or multiple AWS regions. So if we create in a specific region like Oregon, but we can have a global accelerator created in any other specific region that you want. Okay, so we will create the AWS global accelerator again. And this is the basic configuration that you have, like you need to enter your accelerator name. So I will keep it as accelerator hyphenpyphaholic. Okay. I will not add any tags right now because this is the only one that I'm going to create. So it's easy to find for me and then just click on next. What is that we need? We need the ports, isn't it? The ports will be obviously 80 because we want to have that running on port 80 because we are using a web application. The protocol that we have is for the TCP one. So I'll choose TCP and client affinity. So what client affinity tells is if you have stateful applications, global accelerator can direct all requests from a user to a specific client IP address to a same endpoint resource. Okay, so you can just have elasticity in this one as well to maintain client affinity. By default, client affinity is none and Global Accelerator distributes traffic equally between the endpoints in the endpoint group for the listeners. So if I want, I can attach a particular source IP as well, but I'll keep it as none because uh, we are going to make it a global listener. Okay, so that's it. And we can just move forward from this one and just I'll click on next. And you can as well add multiple listeners if you want, but I need a single listener right now because I have only one port that I want to specify and one protocol that I want to actually have my application redirected to. Okay, so I'll just click on next. This is the main thing that we need to configure. So if I choose like one of the instances that uh, or one of the regions that I've already placed my instance. So the first one actually is my AP South one that's for Mumbai. And I have created a EC2 instance that is already on Mumbai location. I can just choose this one. And traffic dial actually tells us like optionally you can set a traffic dial for an endpoint group to dial up 
or to dial down traffic to that particular endpoint okay so it will increase or decrease the amount of traffic that needs to go there okay so percentage is applied to only the traffic already directed to the endpoint group not all listener traffic by default the traffic dial is set to 100 okay so this is like a percentage i can reduce it to 50 if i want 50 percent traffic to be redirected to this one or else i'll keep it as 100 if i want to just have it on my own so i can actually choose to configure the health checks so because uh, ec2 instances don't come with a default health check mechanism but it already has some of the mechanism that already aws provides but here you can just specify like health check port is 80 because uh, we are uh, working on port 80 and health check protocol is tcp the interval in seconds between health checks for each endpoint is 30 and threshold count is 3 so this is fine for us now and one more uh, endpoint we can add endpoint group so this will be for our north virginia uh, instance so where is it where is it yeah you see this one okay so th this one also will be at 100 percent and here also you can configure the health checks and we are satisfied with this so we can just click on next so this is the next section that we have like we have created our endpoints we have created our endpoint groups we now need to map the endpoints to the endpoint groups now okay so add the endpoint so here i can choose one of these endpoint that i have like uh, application load balancer or network load balancer or ec2 instance or elastic ip addresses okay so these are some of the few uh, choices or options that we have that we can choose as an endpoint for our endpoint group okay so as i have already created an ec2 instance i can just go ahead and choose the ec2 instance here and later on in upcoming sessions i will also make videos on network load balancer application load balancer and elastic ips as well okay so just choose ec2 instance for now and choose the endpoint i have only one endpoint here i'll just go ahead and choose it 172.31.3.59 this is the one 172.31.3.59 this is the instance that i am going to choose so i'll choose it and wait wait actually if you see here wait lets you choose the proportion of traffic to be routed to the resource in an endpoint group okay so previously what we saw was for the endpoint group now it is from the endpoint group to the endpoint okay the weightage will be from the endpoint group to the endpoint okay so that's the difference so i can choose like from uh, 0 to 255 any value so based on this actually i have explained this in detail in my route 53 uh, sessions so you can just go ahead and uh, visit that uh, session and just you can uh, read that or you can listen to that so that uh, you have better understanding of what exactly has been mentioned here based on the proportion or uh, the details that have been mentioned here so that's it now let's i can just add one more endpoint you as i already told you that there can be multiple endpoints in a endpoint group so you can go ahead and add another endpoint if you have them the next thing that we have is for the endpoint group us east one we'll add the endpoint here and i'll choose the ec2 instance once again and i'll choose the us east one north virginia instance here 172.31.50.205 and uh, that's it you have added your endpoint groups you have created our ec2 instances which act as the endpoint now you have mapped them to your endpoint groups also so that's everything that you need to do now and just click on create accelerator to create your global accelerator your global accelerator successfully created the accelerator accelerator hyphen pythonic okay so now this has been created and these are the two static ips that i had already mentioned will be used for high availability and uh, this is the dns name that you have so now i have waited for a couple of minutes but i realized that if i use this dns it's still allowing me to communicate with the instance so if i just copy this dns name and i paste it i'm able to reach to my mumbai instance see this is very interesting isn't it so from this dns i am able to communicate with my the instance that i had here so this is the instance that i already had created 172.31.3.59 and with this dns i am able to communicate with the instance exactly the same way that i wanted to by using the aws global accelerator so you might ask like what is the benefit then we have created this what is the benefit that i am getting from here so actually i am right now in india so when I'm trying to use the AWS Global Accelerator link, it is redirecting me to Mumbai. And the advantage that we get here is, let's suppose someone is sitting here in USA or Canada or Mexico or uh, South America. So they will be able to redirect the traffic to the one that is in North Virginia. But you are saying that uh, I am not able to redirect. It's always redirecting me to the Mumbai instance again and again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my location 
so that we can simulate the environment that I am currently in USA or near the USA. So this is my virtual private network. So I just want to go to the virtual location. I wish I could go to Canada, but whatever. Uh, so we are in Canada right now virtually. So I can just switch on the VPN. So it will connect me to Canada and I will be able to access everything that is close to Canada right now. Now staying in India, I am able to access the North Virginia region because as per the VPN or the settings that I have for VPN, the virtual private network, it tells the user that it tells the global accelerator that this user is coming from Canada and the closest one that we have in Canada to Canada is basically our instance that we have in North Virginia. Okay, so this is the same way I am able to access it for the AWS global accelerator. Okay, so the users sitting in North Virginia or close to North Virginia will always be able to access the North Virginia instance and it will be very fast in that particular sense and for users who are staying in India they will be always getting access to the Mumbai region instance and that's the major benefit of using AWS global accelerators so now what happens is I'll just uh, switch off the VPN that I have and I'll just refresh this page again it is coming back to Mumbai now and uh, let's suppose we have our health checks enabled right so what we can do is we can just tweak that particular instance so that we can redirect traffic to North Virginia directly sitting in Mumbai or India and we will see how we can access the North Virginia region endpoint from here itself and how actually AWS global accelerator actually helps us to communicate even if the endpoint is not healthy which is the one that is closer to us okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to change the security group that i have once i click on this one i'll come here and there's the security group and i'll just click on this one and i'll edit the inbound rules and i'll change it to only ssh so no one can access it using the browser and i'll just save the rule okay i'll just refresh this see now it is not able to communicate with my instance using http so i'll choose the dns name here see now it is going to north virginia region from here so my vpn settings are off now okay but still it is redirecting it to north virginia so this is the particular magic that actually happens when you use global accelerators and if you see health checks might not be configured correctly as showing on this one so one unhealthy endpoint i click on this one it will show me um, which one is that so ap south one right yeah so this one it is unhealthy right now it is enabled but it is unhealthy right now so what i'm going to do i'm going to i'll just change it again to http and i'll save it and after a few seconds or 30 seconds or so it will also become healthy so the next question that we have here is how do we do a cleanup on this one so this is the accelerator that i have and what I have to do is I have to retract or do the reverse engineering from here so that I can clean up this one. Okay, so this is the listener ID and this is the endpoint group that I have and this is the endpoint group ID. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove the endpoint. I've removed this, this and click on this and I'll remove it. So I have removed both the endpoints and on the listener again, I'll just go ahead and choose and remove the endpoint group click on this and remove the endpoint group again so go back to accelerator python and you have the listener id here you can just click on this and remove it again you can just click on this and delete it so you have to first disable it by clicking on disable and then once you have disabled it it will ask you to type delete then you can delete it and I want to tell you once again that this is not free also in the free tier account but uh, it takes like 5 to 10 rupees or 15 rupees based on the request that you have but uh, if you don't want to spend it just you can watch this session and learn it so I'll just type delete and just click on delete again that's it that's the cleanup process so I hope you got a clear idea of what we are dealing with and how we created our uh, AWS global accelerator 
so that's it from my side today i hope you enjoyed the session please do practice on this one if you feel like and if you want to spend some money you can do that as well but if you don't want then you can just watch this lesson and let me know what you like what you didn't and please do share comment and subscribe so until then it's python alex signing off <laughs>